So if you've been looking for a home since 2020 and all the way into 2021, and you're hoping for a housing crash this year, well, I have some good news and I have some bad news. Today, I'll be showing you all the silver linings and some of the storm clouds in the distance. So that way you can decide if this year is gonna be the year that you buy a home. The roughly quarter of a point movement that we've seen so far here this year is a, equivalent to roughly a 3% reduction in your buying power. So not a massive move from what we've seen in interest rates so far. If you haven't seen recently, some of the interest rates have ticked up a little bit. I know that sounds like bad news, but in the grand scheme of things, let's think about this. Whenever interest rates tend to go up, it seems like the supply of houses go up as well. And also sometimes the housing prices will drop. Many experts say that the housing prices will not drop this year, but let's think about this again. Maybe there'll be less bidding wars on these homes because some of the buyers that will be in this market are gonna go ahead and say, eh, I, don't, I, wanna, I don't wanna do this. I don't wanna do a whole bidding war and the interest rates are a little bit higher. So there might be a little less pool of people that you're competing with to get the house. Maybe the prices will go down just a scotch. And as a buyer, you may not have to increase your bid so much and have to pay over asking price. This is one of those things that the economists are saying could possibly happen. Price growth simply is not sustainable. So pulling that down to a more no normal level, reducing the bidding war activity, even though you're uh, you're, you're maybe increasing your monthly payment a little bit, you're reducing the, the number of bids that you're competing against in the market, which could be a benefit to you. Here's some other good news. It looks like new construction has picked right back up where it left off. Uh, it had slowed down quite a bit during the pandemic from all sorts of reasons. Not only are the, all the natural disasters throughout the country in California, Louisiana, and even in the Midwest, there was also a crippling in building supplies coming in for like roofing, lumber, and even nails. Now it looks like the supply chain has increased and it's allowing home builders to build again. There is a lot of more confidence in home builders as well as they're building more spec homes. This is a good sign that it's gonna be easier for home buyers to be able to get into a brand new house, meaning that there'll be less competition because there's more homes available, which is great for home buyers that have been struggling to find a house right now. So that's some good news. Mortgage rates rose more last week than during any other week in nearly a year, and it's all thanks to that recent spike in the 10-year Treasury yield, which rates loosely follow. So after hitting a low of 2.75% at the end of January, the average rate on the 30-year fix just hit 3.06% this morning. One thing that I have noticed over the past six months is that in a previous video, I had mentioned the fact that HELOCs were something that people could acquire to borrow money against the equity of the home that they currently lived in. That way that they would have some extra cash during this time of the pandemic in case you've lost your job. Here's the thing. A lot of banks are no longer allowing for people to do HELOC. And as I was looking at this, I was thinking, why would the banks not allow people to take the equity out of their homes if they currently had a job and they're just not even offering that package anymore? Is it that the banks feel like these housing prices are unstable? It's something to think about if you're thinking about purchasing a home here in 2021. I also want to just observe briefly, and I'm not asking for a comment on this, Chairman Powell, but if I could... Uh summarize and characterize your opening comments about the economy, I think it's fair to say that we have many areas, sectors of our economy that are performing extremely well. Uh, housing and the good sector I think you referred to. Just recently I had a home buyer that was wanting to buy a house and she couldn't really necessarily afford the bid. And what she decided to do in order to win the house was to cash in her 401k. I literally thought it was the stupidest idea I've ever heard in my whole entire life. Well, it turns out that this isn't an unusual thing to do. I actually talked to a home investor out of Boston, Massachusetts, and he actually advocates for cashing out your 401k. Here's what he had say. But I want to tell a quick story about why I think you should get out of your 401k and take all of your money and put it into equity and capital. So way back when I had a six figure 401k all through my corporate life, right? And I took all that money out, paid massive penalties and taxes. And I took the remaining money and I invested it in investment properties and houses. So I literally put my money into things that I could generate equity from and then leverage in the future. 
Now you have to be savvy and you have to be intelligent about how you spend your money if you do this, but I genuinely think that it's a better move. So what do you think? Would you do that? Would you cash in your 401k in order to get a house in this housing market before the interest rates rise even more? I don't know if that's a necessarily the greatest idea in the whole entire world. It still makes me extremely nervous, but he does make a valid point on why it's not necessarily as bad as I may think in my head. There's been news articles about it as well, but I don't know. I don't know. Makes me nervous. Couldn't do it. <laughs> Maybe a portion of it. I could probably take out a portion of my 401k, but not, not the whole Jimmy Jangus. <laughs> According to HousingWire.com, the share of loans in forbearance declined to its lowest level since April 5th, 2020. The total number of mortgages in forbearance declined six basis points to 5.29% in the week ending in February 7th, according to the latest estimate from the Mortgage Bankers Association. And then in January, the forbearance numbers had increased, but in February, they actually decreased some. So that is some great news. But I do want to let you know that people now have all the way to June 30th to file for forbearance. Even if they filed at the end of June, they can go ahead and extend those out. So if you're looking for a wave of foreclosures to happen this year, it's not going to happen. And then of course it takes about six months for those to actually hit the market if they're moving quickly enough and they have everything in motion. So if you're looking for a wave of foreclosures, it's probably not gonna happen this year. It may possibly happen at the end of 2022. It looks like if these people aren't going to be able to save their homes, it will be most likely in 2023. I know for many of you that is bad news, but for the people that are trying to save their home, that's actually really good news. And I know as a home buyer right now, it's extremely frustrating because there hasn't been enough on the market. But this is some more good news. There's been a lot more confidence in people and the fact of what's going on with the, the virus. A lot of people that were considering putting their house on the market decided they weren't going to do that because they didn't want a bunch of people coming through their house and they didn't know if they were carrying anything. And they didn't feel really safe with having strangers coming through their home. And now it seems like that we head into the summer, more people are getting vaccinated. The number of people that are getting infected is going down drastically every single day. So I think as we head into the summer months, we're going to see a lot more supply on the market, which is really going to be good for home buyers. Pending home sales drop, but there's a silver lining. Pending home sales fell in January because there's simply not enough homes to match the demand on the market, said Lawrence Yoon, the NAR chief economist. Yoon also said there will also be a natural season of upswing in inventory in spring and summer. These trends, along with the anticipated ramp up in home construction, will provide much needed supply. So the number one question I always get asked is, should I buy a house right now? The thing is, if I had a crystal ball and I could like look at the housing market and tell you exactly what it was going to be doing three years from now, I would tell you. The only thing I can do right now is give you the predictions and the information that I have currently, and you can make that decision for yourself. But with that being said, there is some things that you need to consider. First off is that if renting this house would actually cost you less than the payment that you're paying, then you may want to consider not buying that house. Two, is it financially strapping you to death in order to be able to afford this house? Are you cashing in 401ks and borrowing money from friends just in order to buy a home? And even then the payment might be a little bit too much than you are willing to spend, then maybe you should reconsider even thinking of buying a house right now. But if you're still on the fence and all of those things are fine, don't worry about it. It's going to work out. The interest rates are still good. Don't let the interest rates that have ticked up 1% be the reason why you don't buy a house. I mean, they're still like way under 5%. They're in the threes, for goodness sakes. Twos were unheard of. That was like legendary. But in turn, what happened? It made the housing prices go. Whoosh. So it's never a win-win. One way or the other, you're going to be paying someone somewhere down the road. Well, it doesn't look like 2021 is going to be less of a crazy housing market than it was in 2020. So have you decided if you're going to go ahead and buy this year? Let me know in the comments section. To watch more videos about the housing crash, go ahead and watch this video right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.